So, yes, in order to show you uh, Newton's results, early results on the fundamental theorem, uh, I've chosen a page that is taken from the mathematical notebook. Uh, this is uh, something that Newton uh, wrote uh, uh, in, uh, in 1665, uh, uh, approximately. And um, here we find uh, a diagram and we see two curves. Now, one curve uh, is above uh, the axis of the abscisse and another curve is below the axis of the abscisse. Take into consideration that uh, uh, we have to consider both uh, uh, abscisse as positive, so we are not going, uh, when we consider the curve which is below uh, the abscisse, are still considered as positive. So Newton, just for convenience, writes these two curves in this way. So, uh, what are these two curves? We have one plane curve, and we have above the axis, and we have another curve. This is uh, the curve that measures the slope of the first curve. This is the second curve, the curve below the axis, is the tangent curve, if you like, is the curve uh, which uh, measures the inclination of the slope of the first curve. Now Newton shows that when we calculate the area bounded by the second curve, by the tangent curve, by the curve that is below uh, the uh, axis of the abscisse, we obtain the following result. If we want to draw the graph of the area bounded by the second curve, what we obtain is the first curve, that is, the area bounded by the tangent curve is equal to the curve from which we began. So we have a first curve above the axis, we have a second curve below the axis, the second curve is the tangent curve, we would call it the derivative of the first curve. Then we calculate the area bounded by the second curve, that is, we calculate in Leibnizian terms the integral of the derivative, and what we obtain is the first curve again. So the two operations, the calculation of tangents and the calculation of areas, are one the inverse of the other. 